This video today is in direct response to a question that was asked on Smokestack, a web form that we really enjoy participating in. You can go to Smokestack and learn about steam tractors, old farm equipment, and a lot of really neat stuff. And we attend shows in the tractor industry, so we really enjoy participating on the Smokestack forum. At any rate, the discussion that we were involved in had to do with forged seams in a boiler. And the question that had come up was, why was it that there was an advertisement that advertised a single row of rivets as a lap seam? And I responded back to the question, noting the fact that the reason for this was that back in the late 1800s and even into the early 1900s, we had boilers where the seam, which is right here on this particular boiler, was actually forged together or fusion welded together as opposed to being riveted together. Now typically today we see solid pieces of pipe that don't have a seam in them. Now those pieces of pipe were made at the factory and they're considered seamless because the weld that's put in them or the joint that makes up the, the fusion that puts the two pieces together is so consistent with the original material that it has a perfect joint efficiency. In other words, there's no uh, seam, there's no inclusions, there's no voids that welded seam is as perfect as any other piece of the boiler or almost as perfect as any piece of the boiler. So we call that tube, that piece, a non-seam or a seamless piece of pipe even though it may have a, a seam or a joint in it. But at any rate, back in the, in the old days, these original pieces of pipe didn't have, we didn't have that technology because we didn't have electric arc welding, we didn't have submerged arc welding. The only thing that we had was the means to put two pieces of metal together and either forge them together, basically hammer them together, or what I call, refer to as fusion welding, which is that they would use a number of different means or methods to heat the area up right here and then basically melt the two pieces together creating the seam. Now there's a lot of problems with this type of fusion welding or, or fusing of these two pieces of metal together by means of melting the metal together and then putting it together. And the problem is that when they did this back in the old days they would use a coal furnace or a coal stove to heat the metal up and then they would blow air in it just regular air, atmospheric air, and that air blowing into it would really contaminate the weld pool or the, the molten pool of metal that's being created that's going to fuse these two pieces of parts together. And what we would end up with is an area of metal here where the metal was fused together where you've got it contaminated with all kinds of stuff, sulfur and silica and dirt and then all kinds of porosity that are created from the atmosphere and the air that's being blown into it and you end up with a joint that's very inconsistent and isn't very strong. So that was one method that they used. The second method that they used was to take the two pieces of the pipe and overlap them like this and then heat them up almost the same way and then hammer them together. Now the common question there is going to be how did they hammer this together? Well it was pretty simple. What they did was they put the, the pipe together, they rolled the pipe, overlapped the seam, and then they had a mandrel that either stood straight up in the air like this or stood horizontally like this. And they would put the piece of, of pipe on the mandrel and clamp it to it. And then again, they would come back over with, with different means of, of portable fire, either with a furnace type thing where they would basically direct and blow fire on it. Uh, and this is before we had some types of gases but at any rate, they would heat this area up and then they would hammer the area with a series of hammers and guys where the mandrel was on the inside and the hammers were being used on the outside to form this together. And basically, you've heated up the two pieces of metal like this and then you've hammered them together until they become one piece. So that's a forged joint is what we have in this particular boiler. This boiler was built in 1903, possibly 1902, for a 1904 version of a Cagney steam locomotive. And this boiler, right in this area, and I'm going to bring the camera over and I'll show you a little bit more in depth, has a forged seam right here across the barrel. And the reason we know that this is a forged seam is when I bring you up closer with the close-up shots, you'll actually see the hammer marks in the seam all the way through it. 
Now I mentioned in my post that when you inspect this boiler by ultrasonic inspection, what you see in this area are voids. Now it's really easy to come back and measure the thickness of the boiler right here and say, well, it's just an inconsistency in what's going on. But indeed what's happening is we're seeing voids and inclusions in the two pieces of metal right in this area where the two pieces of metal are formed. As we bring you up closer now for these close-up shots in the boiler, I want you to look very specifically at a couple areas that we've cleaned off and prepared on this boiler. This area here that's got a smooth spot, you can still see the hammer marks around it. This is one of the areas where we did a specific ultrasound inspection on this boiler and which is what helped us understand and learn more about this particular joint and the joint geometry. Got a couple other close-up pictures where you can actually see the hammer marks down through the seam that illustrate a little bit better how this was done and why this evidence is left over. Now this isn't the only area of this boiler that's got this particular type of seam in it. The steam dome also has it, and I'm just going to point it out to you here real quickly. This seam right here in the steam dome is also a forged seam. Now this seam is unique because not only is it forged here, it's also forged uh, into a flange where the dome is set down on here and then the holes are prepared and the rivets are put in. So this entire dome is a flanged or a uh, forged piece as well. Now in the tractor world where I most commonly see a forged seam is in the steam dome. Uh, not too often, I have seen one or two and I want to tell you that I saw one uh, just a year ago at a particular uh, steam tractor show, but I have seen a number of forged steam dome seams. And the steam dome seam can be just as bad as a barrel seam because the interior of this vessel is uh, under the same pressure, internal pressure, the pressure wanting to push out on it, as the barrel is. And if the joint efficiency here in the barrel isn't any good, then clearly the joint efficiency in the dome wouldn't be any better than that of the barrel. So we hope you've enjoyed these couple examples today of what a forged seam looks like and a little bit of an explanation as to how that forged seam was made. Next time you're out with your tractors or with your steam locomotives or anything else, try to pay attention to what you're looking at, what you're seeing, because you may just see some of these seams still out there. We recommend that if you've got a seam like this that Clearly, you take the boiler out of service. We took this one out of service because of this seam. Uh, these boilers were completely taken out of service and weren't made any longer because they knew how ineffective and how dangerous this particular type of seam is. If you've got any questions about the seams or you want to know more about it or you like some more in-depth pictures about this particular seam or other seams that we've seen, don't hesitate to come to our webpage, wasatchrailroadcontractors.us. It's wrrc.us. Ask us questions, send us some more comments. We'd be happy to make another video just like this one. Thanks again for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you on more discussions in Smokestack.